Hello, everybody. Welcome to Parental Composure, episode 11. Hello, Keith. How Hi. are you doing? Fabulous. Thank you. Good. For asking. Thanks for making it again today for this show. Of course. And before we get started, I just wanted to mention um, PIN Business Network. Don't settle for the audience Google wants to give you. Let PIN create the audience you need. And be sure to subscribe to our channel. Uh, ring the bell to get notified for our latest videos, and you have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. So if you are on your phone, make sure you go into your settings, switch on notifications so we can get you listening to our show. So, Keith. Yeah. Uh, well, we're here again today, and we are going to be talking about a subject that is pretty near and dear to you, right? Because, I mean, you've done sports coaching for how many years 21 years <laughs> really yeah oh dang i didn't know it was that long yeah I'm okay old. well i didn't say that don't put <laughs> don't put words in my mouth it's okay I but mean, it's bound to ha it's better that it happens than it doesn't happen right yeah so, for sure yeah. okay mm -hmm. well cool so keith has 21 years of youth sports um, coaching experience. Yes, am, yeah. And so we are going to have him here. Mike is still out. He actually came by the office today with baby Kendall. She's adorable. Mm -hmm. Did it make you want another? No. <laughs> Remember what I said last week? I'm out. Oh, wait, I forgot. I'm, I'm you, done. you don't want, what, 43 kids? 47? No, 47. 47. He's okay. on 47. We're sticking with two. Oh, okay. Okay. I could appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I did hold baby Kendall for about 15 minutes and yeah. it was, it was pretty precious. So... I yeah, don't know. You might change your mind if you... No. That's like a very <laughs> female woman thing to do. Is it? Like, I know that Mike was here. I just feel like it'd be really odd if I was like, hey, can I hold that baby? No. I mean, it wouldn't be odd because I've held babies before, but it's odd. No way. You've held babies before? It's odd. <laughs> it's kind of odd. Like, hey, hey, man, can I hold your baby? Oh. Uh, no. I'm going to go tell Mike that you want to hold his baby. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, how long is this show? Because hopefully they're gone. Oh, yeah, no. They'll be back. They'll be back. All right. And, and well, you can have your chance. Well, that'll be perfect. I'm very excited about that. Super uh, excited. I am excited about it, too. So we did go to Family Fest this weekend. Yeah. Um, we Mike was actually there, and that went really well. So shout out to everybody that we met, and that's actually subscribed to our channel, and um, it was great meeting everybody. Um, I do know that you had mentioned that you were going to be with your kids for about four days straight while oh, yeah. your wife was at rehearsal. Yeah. How did that go? It was awesome. I rocked Good. it. Good. You did? Yeah. Awesome. Did I you mean, let anyone like fall out, fall down the stairs? And... No. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody fell down the stairs. Okay, that's good. Nobody fell down the stairs. But I did, I, yeah. Um, so my son was crawling around, and yeah. at one point in time, he forgot to use his arms. <laughs> <laughs> well, that doesn't really work out, does it? It doesn't. It really didn't. And so he, like, he face planted right oh, into, the, no. into the ground. And I told you last week, right, that my natural reaction is to laugh. I'm yeah. laughing. Right? Yeah. <laughs> So I looked at him, and he looked fine. He had his pacifier in his mouth, so he looked fine. I mean, he cried a little bit, and I told him to stop crying because. It's, it's Wait, clear. you just told him to stop crying? I was like, knock it off. In eighteen months. <laughs> He's fifteen months. Oh, just fifteen months. Oh, okay. Just knock it off. I, I don't want to hear it. And then, like, he he got it. He started playing again, right? And mm -hmm. then um, he took his pacifier out to take a drink of milk, and his pacifier was covered in blood. So he, oh, so he, he had probably lost, he had probably lost it as he was going yeah. down and he's got teeth on the bottom and mm -hmm. they went into his gums like oh. on the top. So he, he did actually hurt himself. And then I had to like clean his face off, <laughs> clean the, the, were you still laughing? I was laughing. <laughs> like, my goodness. But what I told you, my wife. I was going to say, what did your wife say? I told her. Okay. I did tell her. I was well, like, well, was he had a little bit of an accident earlier, but you know, I told him to get over it. Yeah. And, uh, my, my daughter and I watched Rocky. Did you? Mm -hmm. Rocky too. Okay. How, how did she like it? She was bored. But I kept telling <laughs> I, 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 her I kept telling her to be like Rocky. I was like, Colette, you need to be like Rocky. And she goes, No, I'm Colette. I, go, I understand that. <laughs> what I'm telling you is you need to be like Rocky. Uh, Which was kind of a nice segue. We're gonna talk about sports because I'm completely yeah. ridiculous. Did you did you get your boxing gloves out? I, no, I did okay. not get boxing gloves out. But okay. I do have videos of Colette like 
dancing to Eye of the Tiger, which was oh, that amazing. Is, sounds adorable. Amazing. Okay, you're going to have to bring that video in next week. <laughs> it's, it's on this phone right here. Oh. Like I said, there's a thousand pictures of Colette from yesterday, and there's three total from John for his entire life. Actually, no, that's not true. Now there's four. <laughs> I, so you made a point after our podcast to, yeah, to do took more a fourth video. One. That's good. I took a fourth picture. That's good. <laughs> yeah. and so you talked about your wife being in rehearsal, but we didn't really talk about what she does. Oh. So what does your wife do? Yeah, so uh, she's a violinist. Okay, so she, wow. She um, is first section for the Boulder Philharmonic and for wow. Opera Colorado. That is amazing. Mm-hmm. And then she also has, there's a separate group that she plays with called Sphere Ensemble. And so, yeah, she's a violinist. So, I mean, obviously she's a very accomplished violinist. Yeah, she's, she's really good. That would be really cool to have her on the show. Yeah, I'm, talk I'm, about sure, music she, or I'm something. sure she would. Um, I'm sure she would. She And, you know, she, she would talk to you all day long about music. But she she's very good. Um, and she played, not only did she play the show on Saturday night, um, her mom and her sister went and, oh, and that's I cool. had the kids. And then she was also asked to play on Sunday. They they do like these kind of community outreach deals oh, where awesome. certain musicians. So she was under the impression that there was going to be a couple of musicians from the Philharmonic that were mm-hmm. going to play. And she was just representing, you know, the violins. But it was just her and the conductor. What? She's good. Wow. Yeah. So it was kind of funny. We were... We went to, you know, we went to mass on Sunday morning, and then we went for breakfast as yeah. a family. And then she got a phone call while we were at breakfast, um, where they changed up the music. Mm. Oh, no way. Yeah. Who does that? Uh, well, when you're the boss. Oh my gosh, so, that's so not cool. So I looked at her and I said, and I said, well, you know, are you prepared? She was like, yeah, I've played all those before. Oh so dang, she's fine. a professional. So she went, we went home, and the kids took a nap, and she went downstairs and practiced for probably like half an hour. You know how lucky you are that you get to be entertained by a violinist all the time for yeah. free? She's Yeah, she's very good. I mean, you can, I I don't like, so, okay, when we have holidays, mm. I, you know, I, I talked about my family a little bit last week, but they will always, they want to hear Veronica play. Yeah, yeah. And, and my first reaction is she's not, it's not like a traveling show, right? right. She, she's not there to entertain you, yes. right? Yeah. Um, but she never says no. Yeah. And so what'll happen is you'll go. We'll go. You know, we'll be together, and everyone will be there, and people will. She'll get the violin out, and then people will throw names of songs oh. at her, yeah. and then all she has to do is hear it in her head, and then she can just she can play it. Wow. And so if you throw a name of a song out for her, and she she can't remember it, if you mm. just bring it up you know, on YouTube or you bring up the this, this song, right, on your phone and you just give her, you know, five, six seconds of, of it and she'll remember it and then she can play. That is incredible. Mm-hmm. I, I need to meet your wife. Yeah, she's pretty, pretty awesome. awesome. Yeah. I'm biased, but she's pretty awesome. She, she sounds pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. So I'm going into, so I know that's it's kind of different because, you know, music and sports are different, but at the same time, they both take a lot of practice and yep. discipline. and um, And so I think... Moving into what we're going to be talking about today, that would kind of be a good subject to start with, like, you know, the discipline of sports. And I would like to start with getting your perspective since, you know, you do have younger kids, Mm -hmm. so they haven't actually done sports yet, but you've had experience in coaching for 21 years. Mm -hmm. And um, I kind of just want to get a feel for for your opinions about it. So Mm -hmm. I'm thinking to start off, discipline. So when it comes to sports, you know, being the coach, um, versus the parent, um, Mm. you have certain things in mind as a coach that you want for the kids and Mm. then the parents either comply or don't comply. Mm -hmm. So how does that affect you as a coach and how does that affect the kids? Yeah. So uh, I've been coaching team sports for a really long time. So as far as I'm concerned, my, my base philosophy is when you play team sports, team sports are the greatest Right. Individual sports are great, right? Mm-hmm. You, you're still going to learn discipline. You're still going to do that. But, but if you're involved in team sports, then you also have the social compact that comes with it. Mm-hmm. So um, you have a responsibility. And I, right now, um, the club that I coach with, um, I, I have the, the little kids when they first come into the academy. So they get past the mm-hmm. three on three. Um, and then they get into the academy. And the, these are the kids who, you know, they're, they're being taught how to play 
you know, soccer. Okay. Um, and so I'm one of the few coaches. I've been doing it for a really long time. Right. Um, most most people, most coaches that come out of school or they're in their you know late 20s, early 30s, they want to coach like the 15, 16 year olds. Mm-hmm. And I I would enjoy that. I yeah. mean, there's there's stuff in my head and in my past that I could bring to those those games. But yeah. but there's also valuable things that you can bring to eight, nine, ten year olds. And and oh, the yeah. first thing that I will talk to them about is 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 the the expectations of being a teammate, right? And and you have to you have to be playing outside of the time then we're together. And there's mm-hmm. things that you have to do and you have to take ownership of on your own. Mm-hmm. Right. And then when you come to the team environment where I have you and I've got forty girls mm-hmm. that I coach okay. right now. Yeah. Right. And they're split up wow. into four teams. So if you can imagine there's me and one other person on the field and we're setting up games I can, for 40 kids. I can only right? imagine. So <laughs> I can't spend a bunch of time right. working on individual stuff. Now mm-hmm. I can show individual stuff and then they go off and they do it. Mm-hmm. And then you have to, I have to be very diligent about making sure that everybody gets, gets a, you know, some piece of feedback or comment. But what we can actually work on is the team stuff. Yeah. And so I will tell parents before season start, when they first meet me, right? There are things I'm going to teach your kids and they have to do it at home. Can right? you tell right away the parents that are going to be willing to do it? Oh, yeah. And, okay, so that's... You, yeah, I've been doing it long enough that you can tell there are certain parents that will that will ask you questions mm-hmm. and then they will take what you say and, and, then, and then follow suit when mm-hmm. their kids are at home. Right? Yeah. There are other parents where um, you will, I will ask for things and they'll they'll tell me yes, right? But you can't you you can do whatever you want when you get home. It's your kid, right? Right. Mm-hmm. But I will be able to tell the next time I see your kid mm-hmm. when I ask them to do things, and you have asked them to do something different, right? Right. Yeah. And then there's <laughs> other parents where um, what they really want to learn is how I would go about teaching that, and then they'll teach the same way. Do you appreciate that? Absolutely. I think I appreciate all three, right? Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, it's it's their kid, mm-hmm. right? And and they want the best for their kids. So I understand that. Yeah. I'm much more I'm much more relaxed, as ridiculous as that sounds, today than I was, you know, fifteen years ago. Do you think that has something to do with having your own kids? It has something to do with me being old. <laughs> right. But I think part of it has to do, you know, okay. with being like with them being, you know, me having my own kids. But I think a lot of it just has to do with experience, right? Yeah. And the more mm-hmm. um, the more experience that I've had you know, and just being a little bit older, a little bit more mature, like on, you know, in the way that I'm interacting with people. Um, and then I, I've also had much longer, uh, much longer time where I've been separated from playing myself. Mm. And I think that's the biggest thing. So, yes. So you're not as much in it as you, you're kind of the outsider. Right. Okay. So what, um, I guess we didn't really go into this. What all, what are all the sports that you did play? So when I was a kid, I did everything. Okay. Uh, the only sport I never played was baseball. That's a different story. It, it has a lot to do with my dad being like doing the exact opposite of what my grandfather would want him to do. So wait, was your dad a baseball player? Or uh, my grandfather was a huge baseball fan, oh, okay. and so then it was like the he was he was in the military, right? Part of the greatest generation. Right? So, so so my dad was growing up, and you do these things. And mm. you do these things right? So mm-hmm. then you know my dad moved from the from from you know uh, east pennsylvania right to omaha because oh, wow. number one where's omaha and number two it's far enough away <laughs> that my parents aren't gonna i'm gonna get my dad <laughs> i'm just kidding um but it's a true story so uh we so we played i played soccer i wrestled i played football um i stopped playing football after eighth grade because i'm not a big person Mm -hmm. and I went from being like in peewee football fourth in fourth grade I was a fullback Mm -hmm. which is hilarious because I probably weighed like 30 pounds (laughs) but I would run through a wall because I I told you I had two older brothers so if they told me to I couldn't run through a wall then I would go do it and then in fifth and sixth grade I was the quarterback because growing up in Nebraska Mm -hmm. we weren't Cornhusker fans like my dad we were not fans of Nebraska football for um for many many reasons but in the Big Eight at the time, it was Nebraska and Oklahoma, right? And they had some phenomenal teams between those two universities, and they all ran the triple option. So we okay. learned to run the triple option, which maybe doesn't mean a whole lot to you. It does. I'm, I'm wondering, what is the triple option? Okay, so back in the day, yeah. before 
everybody became, you know, the Houston Oilers and the, the run and gun, run and shoot, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the triple option is you have a fullback behind you, okay. and then you have two running backs. Okay. So it looks like mm. you have three options, right? Mm. So like Air Force still runs, they, they run like a, um, a, it's not quite the wishbone anymore, mm. but they run the triple option where okay. ha- you always have a dive play that you can hand off. And so as the quarterback, you're reading three things, but yeah. you're also a runner. So the military oh. academies do it. Uh, Georgia Tech also still runs it. So you can watch Georgia Tech football games. And when wow. teams play against Georgia Tech, they have to completely change the way that they scheme because there's no other teams that play like it. So that's pretty risky for the quarterback to be a runner too, right? But if you're, well, I mean, yes, unless you're built to be a running quarterback. Mm-hmm. Like it's, mm-hmm. you know, like if you're Lamar Jackson mm-hmm. and when he was at Louisville, he would just run. Right. And, mm. and, and, you know, they're in college is a little bit different, but yeah. Okay. I mean, there were amazing quarterbacks that we watched come through Nebraska and through Oklahoma. And so that's what we would do. We mm. would practice. Right. So Your I played had football. Like a, a little football team with well, all three of you guys. Huh? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. And <laughs> so someone. we would draw plays. Right. And my brothers would throw the ball and I wouldn't catch it. And then, <laughs> yeah, sorry for another day. So I wrestled, I played football. Um, I played tennis. We played a, I played a little bit of golf when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. My brothers played more golf than I did with my dad because I'm sure that while I would w- want to go, like, I'm right. sure that my you were dad the youngest. was, come on, you're <laughs> five. This isn't, <laughs> this isn't very fun. Um, but I basically did anything I could, anything I could, any cool. sport that I played. And then when I went into high school, that was when I stopped doing basically everything else and just played soccer. Okay, so is soccer, choosing soccer as your sport of choice for coaching, is it because it's your favorite sport, would uh, you say? Or? Um, I, I love watching sports just in general. Mm-hmm. Actually, the, my favorite sport to watch right now in general is hockey. Oh, really? I love watching hockey. Okay. I mean, the, the, I tried they to get play. pretty uh, aggressive. Oh, <laughs> that's the best part because you can't do that in other sports. Yeah. But I just really appreciate the fact that if you do something in a hockey game, right, you have to answer for it. It doesn't happen in other sports, right? But man, if I could just punch somebody in the face because they did something when I was playing, oh, like man. I totally would have been the guy. I would die. I would have been the guy that would like punch somebody in the face and then gotten rocked. Like I would have gotten smoked because I'm not a big person. <laughs> It wouldn't have stopped me from punching people in the face. <laughs> whatever. Well, no, you grew up with two older brothers. Exactly. It's, it's a normal thing. So, yeah, it, it's, I like watching soccer. Um, I like watching soccer for reasons that most people can't understand. Mm. If, you, if you've played it and you played it, I played Division One, and, and um, I had the opportunity. It's a long story, but I had the opportunity to go on. But I had, again, I'm not a big guy, and I had lots of concussions. And okay. um, as I was growing up, I had lots of concussions. And then I had a, um, a series of them in college. Wow. And I actually had three of them while I was in college that were grade three, meaning I was unconscious for more than three minutes. And I actually got taken off the field when I was a junior um, to the hospital. And I was in the hospital for like two days. So there's this, I mean, I think it's coming out now more, but there's this idea that football is more dangerous than soccer in terms of concussions and mm-hmm. stuff, would you disagree with that? I don't know. I don't know if I would say more dangerous. I would say if you if you think, I, I think any game that's predicated on violent collisions, mm-hmm. right? It's you're, gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Yeah. Right. Soccer is not predicated on violent collisions, but they happen. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And so um, it doesn't look as violent. Yeah. But when you are focusing, you know that you, you know oh, that yeah. deal like when you when you are walking in your house. And you're, and you're not actually paying attention because, you know, maybe you're talking to kids or you're looking at your phone or you're having a back conversation. Yes. And you walk into a table. Yes. Right? You're, you're not prepared for it, so there's no mitigation mm. in your body. Like, it's hard to, I'm going to run into this table. Mm-hmm. But if you actually walk into the table, it hurts. Right? Yeah. And there's no padding on your, your legs. Right. right? That's just bone. Mm-hmm. Your ankles are really exposed. But the thing that's actually exposed the most is your head. So when you jump... Right, and and you you're trying to use your body to create separation. You still have to come to the point where the ball is at, mm. and that's when you when those things happen, you can't describe that pain because you're not focused on oh the idea gosh. that you're about to headbutt something, yeah. which you can mentally prepare. It's still going to hurt, mm-hmm. right? But when you are looking and focusing on this thing, 
and you make contact or you miss, right? But you're actually taught, mm -hmm. right, to create power through your core, right, that, that comes out through your forehead like that. Mm. And then, so, then right, yeah. you, you're, you're taught to when you jump, right, you, you bring your arms out. Okay. Right? So you're not taught to, like, elbow. But you're taught to come up so that now I've got like a foot and a half right. between my shoulder and my elbow, right? And then, like and then if someone runs into my mm. arm, right, I can, as it's being compressed, right, I can resist and I can kind of keep you away. Okay. So the, the adage is like, he, if you jump first, you're going to win. Okay. Because once your arms are up, someone's got to jump through this arm in order to beat you height-wise to the ball. It's when you're doing this. Right. So are there things, I mean, obviously this is probably a stupid question, but I'm sure there's things in coaching. Are you, are you pretty persistent on teaching things to avoid collisions, especially in kids? And yeah. So you learn how to, so, okay. So the kids that I coach now, mm -hmm. the, so the U S soccer association has removed, they're not allowed to head the ball. Okay. So they're actually not allowed to head the ball until I think t 13. Oh. Right? So when did that happen? Recently? Um, a or? couple years ago. Okay. So it's, been, it's been a few years. So they instituted this rule. So, so the kids that I coach, boys, mm -hmm. girls, whatever, when they're under that certain age, they're not allowed to head the ball. Okay. So then the ball will bounce, right? And then eventually they figure it out and they get it down on the ground and then they kind of do their thing. Mm -hmm. So back in when I was coaching older kids – Right then, yes, you do teach them how to. Right, you do teach them how to jump. Right, you do, you teach them how to create space. You okay. teach them how to protect themselves. Um, but you still, I mean, <laughs> again, you're going to teach them ultimately that that making contact with the soccer ball is the most important thing. Making you know doing doing the things you need to do in order to win. Okay. Right? So like, if the ball is this high off the ground, yeah. And the best thing for me to do is dive and head that ball, right? I'm putting my head this high off the ground where people's feet are going to be. Oh right? So yeah. there's just certain risks that you will take, but yes, you teach I would teach them mitigating, you know, ways to 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 sort of protect themselves. But again, it's not the it's not the things you can see. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. That's you don't get hurt when you see it. If football players, they oh, don't get yeah. hurt when they see it. Right, you're not going to be expecting it. It's when it. you don't, right? Mm -hmm. That's when the NFL has brought in those rules about blindside blocking, right? And the the, cup, the comeback blocks, if you're facing away, you know, from the flow of the play and you turn and you mm -hmm. block somebody, mm -hmm. you, you can't anticipate that that's happening because it's not natural. It's not, it's not a natural part of the game. Okay. So, you know, the NFL college has eliminated it. They've eliminated the receivers going over the middle, catching the ball, right, and making contact above their shoulders. All those things are just to try and reduce not the collisions. Mm -hmm. They don't you, you can't take collisions out of sport, mm -hmm. right? But you can take the I'm not anticipating it, right? I'm focusing on this thing up here mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden this bullet right leading with the crown of your helmet right comes right into your head. Oh my god. Right? It's those times when people get hurt. I think that's the part that scares parents the most. I don't think, I mean, obviously parents want their kids to be involved in things, mm -hmm. to learn the discipline, to learn team, you know, being on a team and everything, but it's the injuries. Yeah. And so how often do you see those injuries happening? I mean, as a coach for 21 years, is it a, like a lot or, I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, is it... Is it worth worrying about, I guess, and keeping your kid from... Okay, so a couple of things. So I've seen them, mm -hmm. right? But they are still rare. Okay. Right? It's not like a game-by-game -game occurrence where mm -hmm. this is happening. Now, yeah. when you watch... If, if, if you're watching a recap of a weekend's worth of football games, mm -hmm. college football, right, 119 Division One teams, the NFL has 32 teams, right? You're going to watch... You know, you're going to see highlights of 50 games. Let's mm -hmm. just make up a number, right? Yeah. You're going to see highlights of 50 games. Okay, so then you're going to process that these things that happen in one mm. of them is happening in all of them. Mm -hmm. But the reality is they're not, right? So, yes, guys get flagged in college football for targeting. They get kicked out of the game, right? As right? soon as that happens, right, you have to – they're being trained. They're being mentally taught, Right to in ways in which they're supposed to, you know, with better form, with better fundamentals, to not have those things occur. So what will happen, what I will teach, right, and, and the other coaches, you kind of, you know, as you do this long enough, I have basically met every oh, club sure. coach from the other clubs, mm -hmm. and they know who I am, and, and right, and so you have conversations. And when someone does something 
that's dangerous, Mm -hmm. right? Then the expectation is not for the coaches to go ballistic, right? Where when they're 16, 17 years old, like those things, you know, like I said, right? If I could punch somebody, (laughs) you know the rules, right? Right. And you know when you're doing things that you're not supposed to do. Mm -hmm. When they're kids, they don't. Right. So, you know, you'll teach them about how to, how to, you know, slow down and back, like not swing when a goalie comes out, picks up the ball. Once, once they have it in their hands, don't slide in there. Mm. If it happens, right, you use it as a moment to correct through teaching, mm-hmm. right? Pushing in the back is dangerous, right? So this is why. So if you want to make that happen, right, then you have to, you have to find a way to get yourself, you know, side by side. Mm-hmm. So if, if, they've, if they have good coaches when they're little, they learn those things early. Mm. And then really what happens is um, they learn that there is a level of respect or expectation when mm-hmm. you compete that the rules exist for a reason. Right. That doesn't mean that there's not going to be some sort of emotional outburst and somebody does something dumb, right? <laughs> because it happens, it happens in the NFL. It happens in any pro sport, right? right. You can watch any pro sport and... And people will do crazy things. Mm-hmm. I mean, the some of the hits you see in Stanley Cup playoffs, you know, you've got the guys back in the 90s. I forget his name. Maybe it was the early 2000s. I think he was in the Bruins. McSorley? I don't remember what. I don't remember his name. And he just, like, took a stick to Donald Brashear's head. I mean, he just oh jacked him right in the head, right? Okay, see, that as a parent, I have no – like, if that were my kid, I have no – patience for that. No. I mean, like, how do you handle that as a coach when you're not even their parent and you can't really, I mean, that, right. that kind of stuff is a foundational issue that they learn in, in the house. Right. Right. So how do you, so, okay. That? So that's a good question. So now my, what I will tell the parents is, is when they're there, when that stuff happens, mm-hmm. right. I have the ear of the other coach. I have the ear of the referee. Mm, I will I will be the one yeah. who protects your kid mm-hmm. because I'm the one who's responsible for that instruction, mm-hmm. for that education, mm-hmm. right? Now, if you are on the other side of the field and you know that and something happens and you hear me interjecting, mm-hmm. my expectation is you can keep the other side of the field calm by not participating, right? Wow, because if, a... if parents start to interject yeah. themselves, mm-hmm. then the other team's parents are going to start raising the temperature, oh, right? I've seen it. And then mm-hmm. that's where those crazy things happen where parents start fighting, right? Right? Yeah. If, if and I'll say this, like, trust me mm-hmm. that if your daughter or your son, if, it, if I feel like I'm witnessing something where they're at risk, mm-hmm. I'm going to intervene before that happens. Yeah. Right? Because I can do it by turning to the other coach and having a conversation. And that's where, right, you rarely see, mm-hmm. right, You good coaches know each other. They have conversations. They'll protect, right? They'll yeah. instruct. If somebody on my team does something, I'll pull them off the field, give them, give them, give them coaching, like give them instructions. This is, this is what you need to do. And you, you say it Mm. and you say it loud enough that the other coach and the other team knows that you're doing that. And then the temperature just goes, right. The hardest thing to actually control is when something happens just out of the blue. Mm -hmm. Right. And then most of the time they don't, the kids don't, aren't the ones that react first. It's their parents. Yes. Right. And then (laughs) when their parents react, what they, what they, and again, I mean, (laughs) I'm not going to tell you that that I will be the saint, right? My goal is mm-hmm. to not do that because mm-hmm. I've experienced it enough, and I think I can actually handle it. But if if you if you raise the temperature level, the other side is not going to take your side. The other mm-hmm. the other group of parents are not going to take your side. They're going to yeah. start protecting, and then all of a sudden, right, the parents are bickering, and that. And I've I've watched that happen, mm-hmm. um, and I've just I've had conversations where you have to trust that I know what I'm doing. You ha- you have to yeah. trust that that I would not let something that's not a part of the game, right, pass. Yeah. But things may get physical in this particular game and maybe not this other particular game because of the the personalities of the team you're playing against. Yeah. But that's going to happen as you get older. It doesn't matter what sport it is. So it, it's tough. That's um, a, As a parent, too, that's a really hard thing to come to grips with is because you don't see what's – I mean, you see it, but you don't hear what's going on on the field. So it does take a lot of trust from the parent's perspective mm-hmm. to – 
you know, to believe and to trust that the coach is going to be doing what they need to be doing to teach your kid and to also prevent it from happening again on the field, um, you know, when it comes to soccer or football. And I've seen many times when I think you're completely right about that. Like you see one parent getting upset and then the other side gets upset and then everyone's just yelling at each other. And it just, I mean, there was one time when my son was playing peewee football in Texas and you know how big football is mm -hmm. in Texas. Um, they had to have the cops come. Like yeah. all our boys are out there. They're like nine years old and they literally had two coaches fighting on the field. Right. And so in that situation, it's like you have, obviously, you know, you do a good job at coaching. You know, you take all those foundational things and you, you, t you take them serious. But there are those coaches mm -hmm. out there that don't. Like, how does that affect your kid, you know? Because, yeah. I mean, because it's like they're, they're, they're supposed to be learning what right. sports are all about. Right. And then they have these leaders mm -hmm. that are completely doing exactly the opposite. Correct. Correct. And I don't have a good answer for you, right? Yeah. Because I've seen my, sh I will, I am emotionally invested. Like I will teach them how, like there, there's a special sort of concentration and energy level that you can bring, right? Mm -hmm. There's a, there's an excitement level that you can bring. And then that, that the further you're able to push that without crossing the line, right? The further you're able to push your ability, in my opinion, to be a good athlete, to be mm -hmm. a good teammate, right? Yeah. But if the adults can't de-escalate a situation, mm -hmm. the kids will have no way to actually de-escalate the, situ the right. situation. Right. So I have actually, in, you know, last year, as a good example, we are playing a team where the coach, and I know him, mm -hmm. right? And, and it, no one likes him. I'm, I, I'm sure that his wife does <laughs> for like minutes. But nobody that I actually engage with in coaching conversations likes this guy. And everybody knows that it's going to happen. Mm. So one of the things that we've asked for, right, is that the, the director mm -hmm. of coaching for the club mm -hmm. sits, like sits with us. Okay. So, so then they'll come and they'll sit. So it's really hard to be that guy when your boss is sitting there, yeah. right? Because, and, then, and then you have to know mm -hmm. that every time I go to these games, my boss has to come because I'm that guy, right? Yeah. And so I've, I've been doing this for a while, and I've watched him become less and less and less that guy. But he is that guy so when, the, when they're playing in tournaments, mm. right? And the challenge is because he's setting the example that the temperature can continue to rise, mm -hmm. right? Then the kids can't figure out that there's a difference between playing hard mm and being that person. Right, because it doesn't have to all mesh together. Because it doesn't, Yeah. right? There is a way to play sports with the maximum amount of intensity mm -hmm. and not be cheap or dirty. Mm -hmm. And you can watch it if you watch the NFL, if you watch any pro sport. Mm -hmm. That is the maximum amount of intensity that you can, you can exert, right. right, as a human in that sport. Those mm -hmm. are the best of the best. Mm -hmm. And they're not killing each other. They, the games end. Someone wins, right? They walk to the middle of the field. They're high fiving each other. They're hugging each other, right? They're mm -hmm. they're you know they're fist bumping. They're having they're smiling. They'll get in a circle in the middle and they'll pray. Like mm -hmm. that is what I'm talking about. You have to be able to do that. You have to be able to switch that off mm -hmm. because there's a there's a game that you're playing, mm -hmm. and that game doesn't always feel like a game, right? Mm -hmm. But there and there's an intensity that you can bring, but that doesn't mean you cross the line. That's the difference, in my opinion, between between athletes who have coaches, mm -hmm. right, and athletes who have people who are maybe living vicariously through them, right. or they have advocates, right, or they're just they just have coaches that are that are taking advantage of the fact that I've got a star player. Yeah, right? which happens unfortunately a lot. Yeah, I mean, and from a parent's perspective, you know, I've like you know my boys are in sports. Obviously, wrestling is a little bit different because it's an individual sport, and so there's not as much of that. Mm -hmm. But I've witnessed lots of times when there's these coaches that end up becoming coaches because they're the dad, and then you end up having like six or seven coaches on the, on the, you know, on the field. And it's because all of them want their boys to be played first. Mm -hmm. And I know so many parents that just get, oh, you know, yeah. irked by that. Um, from a coach's perspective, I mean, obviously you haven't had kids in sports yet, mm -hmm. so you haven't had to deal with that, but is that okay? I mean, what is your perspective? 
Like I, if they are putting the time in yeah. to coach, yeah. should their kids be played first and most of the time? So, or no. So, okay, so in my opinion, sports, in my opinion, life is merit-based, mm. right? Mm-hmm. You either earn it or you don't. This is, where, this, yeah. is where, this is where I get myself in trouble when I talk to my wife about music, uh-huh. right? Because as an athlete, she's a professional musician, mm-hmm. right? The rules in her industry are not even close to the rules Right, when mm-hmm. you're talking about professional sports. Right. And, I w- and we've, had this conversa- we've had this conversation, and I will joke with her. I'm like, well, you know, if they want to sit where you're sitting, they should get better. And she's just like, that is not how it works. Right? <laughs> like, uh, okay, like, I know, we've had the conversation. Yeah. But in my mind, right, okay, so I, I've coached my niece, mm-hmm. right? I've coached my nephew. Um, I coached them when they were really little. I coached them as they got a little bit older. Mm-hmm. And then the way that it works today is you don't really kind of stick with them for for you know for the rest of their their um playing career i have i coached um you know a team where the dads were really involved right and um and i've coached teams where the parents are just you know not involved Mm -hmm. and i think so number one no if you're the coach right and and your kid plays on the team and there are there are coaches that i coach with in the club Mm -hmm. where their kids they've they've coached their own kids um, or I've coached their kids. In fact, one of the directors of the club right now, his youngest daughter is somebody that I coach. Okay. Right. And he knows that his daughter is good. Mm-hmm. Right. But there are things that I want done and things and I, things that I want to teach her. And his time to teach her will be in a few years when mm-hmm. she gets to that point. Right. Mm-hmm. So right now it's what I say. Right. And he's really good about yeah, okay, like that's what, you know, that's, that's what awesome. coach wants to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think number one, you've got to be really careful about that, about the the perception, true or not, of, mm-hmm. of favoritism. Yes. Right? But the thing you have to care about the most is, are you positioning the team in a team sport? Are you teaching the kids the value of that teamwork mm. and, and making sure that you're doing the right things, not all the things, but the thing, the job that you have, yeah. right? Because as you get older, the fields get bigger, things get faster, and you have to do your job, mm-hmm. right? Again, if you watch an NFL football game, when something breaks down, it's because somebody doesn't do their job, right? Now, they may lose an individual battle, and that might be the thing that they don't do, okay. right? Yeah. But when you're talking about coverage schemes or you're watching you know, passing plays, most people watch offense, mm-hmm. right? Depending on what I'm doing, you'll, if my team is on offense, then I'll watch that, right? Mm-hmm. But I'll watch defense. Like, what are they, what, what roles do they have? What spots do they have to cover, right? And then the challenge for the offensive scheme is to try and put and, and isolate one person. Mm-hmm. And, and that person, that defender, has to make the right decision in a split second. And that's when you see not five-yard passes, but you see the 30-yard, you know, because that's when coverages break down. That's when I, I made this choice, okay. but it wasn't my job to do that thing, okay. right? So when I watch professional sports, remember I told you earlier, yeah. like when I watch sports, I'm not watching what you're watching. Right. right? I'm watching something completely different. See, yeah. And that's hard as a parent, too, because if you don't really understand the game, right. all you know is what you know. Right. And then you're trying to tell the coach <laughs> how to coach, right. and that's... I'm sure right. it gets so frustrating. I'm watching a math equation. When mm-hmm. I'm watching soccer, I'm watching um, an evolving geometry problem. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. what I'm watching. Yeah. And I can't explain it to you, but that's how I see it. And so when parents mm-hmm. tell their kids from the other side of the field to do something that breaks that geometric pattern, mm-hmm. right? It drives me up the wall. <laughs> sure. Right? Yes. Because if you would just do the thing, mm-hmm. this one little thing, the way I'm asking you to do it, they would score a thousand times. I've heard right? you say this in Monday meetings if a you, little bit. If you just do this one thing, <laughs> the just way trust I'm at, me. right, then yeah. then then it would work, yeah. right? But if you break that, you you do you you do something else. Now I understand, right? Mm-hmm. They're trying in their mind. They're they're trying to make the best decision, mm-hmm. right? And my job is to to continually show them that there are other decisions they can make that might create results that they're actually looking for. But you know, one of the things that drives me. The thing that, one of the things that makes me the most upset is when parents offer monetary rewards for the wrong things, mm. right? Yeah, give us an example. So um, every time you score a goal, I'll give you 10 bucks, mm. right? Yeah. If I hear that, right, then you're going to go play goalie, 
Do you say something to the parents oh, yeah. when you hear that? Because the problem is now that what that kid is thinking about mm-hmm. is I have to do these things. And, and in a team sport, if you win 2 nothing, mm. and you had nothing to do with either of those goals, mm-hmm. but you were part of the team that allowed the other team to not score at mm-hmm. all, then that's an amazing thing. And you should, you should care about that. Because what matters as a team is winning. Right. And if you are on a team that is winning, then you are going to be put in positions where you will learn faster, mm-hmm. right? And you'll learn more, you know, fundamentals on how to, as you get older, there are things that you have to do because you can't just outrun everybody, mm. right? But when your parents, your, your dad says, I'll give you 10 bucks every time you score a goal, you're the tallest kid and you're the fastest kid. Mm-hmm. By the time you're 13 years old, right, you might as well just quit. Because I'm going to tell you, when I was 13 years old, I probably weighed 70 pounds. Yeah. Right. And I pretty, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I was in middle school and I wrestled like 73 and then I was in eighth grade and I wrestled 84. This is why I had to quit playing football. (laughs) Right. But I didn't make any, any club soccer teams right when I was 13 years old. I didn't, I tried out for them and didn't Mm -hmm. make any of them. I made the first team as I was turning at the fall before I turned 14. That Mm -hmm. was the first sort of select soccer team I made Okay. because I wasn't big Mm -hmm. and I wasn't super fast. Mm -hmm. Right. But I could play soccer. Yeah. So then when I grew and became fast because mm-hmm. I knew how to work, yeah. because I had to work harder than the kid who was twice my size, right? Yes. There I spent, this is sort of ridiculous, but 20 years mm-hmm. that I still have high school records that exist today. That's 20 years. That's, yeah. It's more than 20 years I'm old. <laughs> one of them lasted for 20 years before it was broken. Wow. The other one, I don't know if it'll ever be broken. That's me being arrogant. <laughs> But I turned. You earned it. But you I turned it. something, right? I turned the learning how to play because I mm-hmm. had to, because I didn't have the physical height and strength and speed. But as soon as I was old enough and grew, not super tall, because I'm not super tall, but I knew how to work out, mm-hmm. and I knew how, I knew the importance of lifting, and I knew the importance of technical and tactical understanding. Yep. And then I went from being, you know, the kid to being the captain. See, yeah, and, and I think in my opinion, like, that is so important because the, sa- the same thing happened to my son who's 14. He's wrestled since he was, like, four or five, you know, and he never was the best. Like, but every practice, he'd be the hardest worker. I mean, he'd get, you know, at the end of the year, an award for working mm-hmm. hard. And finally this year, as a freshman, he's placing in all the tournaments. That's right. And, and, and I, I'm so appreciative of that because it teaches you so much as a kid going into adulthood because you're not always going to be first mm-hmm. in, in everything, you know? Mm-hmm. And if you know how it is to struggle a little bit but still commit and work hard, then it potentially you could end up a winner. That's right. In the long 100% run. agree. I think I was telling you the story and I told my daughter, be like Rocky. <laughs> yes. And I, those movies, all, those movies are just two hours of montages. Yeah. Right. The first one, the first one's not. The first one's actually a really good story. Right. And it's, it's a really good story. The second one's a pretty good story, but he starts to like, he, he's got a little bit of mojo and he has some money and he won an Academy Award. So there's montages. Uh-huh. The third one is like a montage fest. And then when he, when he goes into the fourth one and it's like America versus the USSR because Drago is a doping cheater. It's nothing but montages. Watch that. Watch the movie. It's nothing but... I'm telling you right now, it's nothing but montages. I got to get... I got to get... I got to watch those But I told Colette, be like Rocky, right? Yeah. And that doesn't make any sense to her. Mm -hmm. But to me, the character Rocky is the guy who never quits. Never. Mm -hmm. He's not the most talented in any of the fights that he's ever in, Mm -hmm. right? He's not the fastest. He's not the strongest. He's not even good. Mm -hmm. But he never quits. Yeah. Right. And if you have that in my mind, if you have that mentality, if you can get yourself to that point, it doesn't matter whether it's sports or whether it's school or whether it's music or mm-hmm. whether it's just being, you know, great in your job, mm-hmm. you'll be phenomenal. Yeah. And I that agree. is what I will tell parents that I'm actually t- teaching their kids. Mm-hmm. Because if you if if I'm teaching them when they're eight, life fundamentals yeah. that are that are masked because we're talking about a sport when mm-hmm. they're 16 those things that they were hearing from me about effort and not quitting and and you know and and no matter what the circumstances are you're you're putting the best of you out whether you're tired or whether it's hot or whether it's cold doesn't matter mm-hmm. then when you're 16 
that could be geometry. That could be math class. Oh, it could be that everything. could be science. It right? could that, be marriage. It could be marriage. <laughs> it could right? be parenting. It could be all. Maybe not when you're 16, but yes, it could be those things, right? And so, not. so the point is, sports in my mind, right, is just a, it's just a conduit to learning how to be like. It mm-hmm. sounds cliche, but you'd be a winner. Yeah. Like you should want to win. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean you're rooting for other people to lose. You should always want to win and you should be willing to put in whatever it takes to make that happen. Right. Right. And, and never settling for anything else. Be like Rocky. Yeah. Be like Rocky. <sighs> yes. I like that. I should, that should be <laughs> the title my, of this. As my mom says, <laughs> I'm going to have to unwind all the things that you are telling your daughter. <laughs> I'm like, well. It's okay. Being like Rocky is good. I mean... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, and that does, like you said, it, it does go into music. It, I mean, because I, I did music as a kid and mm-hmm. I played piano and I sang and, um, you know, I made it to all state and all that stuff. But that wasn't because I just sat around and got a participation award. And, and you know, that was because you have to put the work in mm-hmm. to get there. And so wh- how do you feel about these sports now that are just giving these participation awards to kids. I mean, I could get, in my opinion, I could understand these little kids, you know, like three, four. I mean, but really once it starts to get like to the age of accountability, like eight or nine, like, mm-hmm. is that? The funny thing to me, um, when the kids are, so, okay, so the kids are turning eight when they, when I first start coaching mm-hmm. them. And I've coached, uh, you know, three V three when the kids are four, mm-hmm. right? So, so parents, it's the adults who are saying these mm-hmm. things are important. The kids don't, in my opinion, they don't care. Mm-hmm. So in the 3v3 games, you don't keep score. Do you know who does? The kids. They know the score, <laughs> right? And they will, they will say, like, I remember my niece, she's like, it's 13 to 1. Like, yeah. How do you know that? I mean, I stopped counting at 2, Right, because who cares? And she's like, "Nope, it's thirteen. And by the way, I've scored seven. She, they know. <laughs> we don't keep track of wins and losses. Mm-hmm. So the state um, soccer association does not keep track of wins and losses okay. for eight, nine, ten year olds, right? Because they don't actually play in a, a true state cup. Once they go up the next, when they start playing nine v nine, there's actually a true state cup mm. that's sponsored. And so then, in order to make those divisions or make those those tournaments and then there's out of state tournaments that they can go to they have to actually keep a, a record mm-hmm. right but they don't in the age group that i'm currently coaching those girls know their record 100 percent. wow they know they know how many games they've lost they know how many games they've won they know how many games they've tied they mm-hmm. know the score in that game that they lost against that team the next time they play them okay so the parents not the parents most parents that I meet are not fans of participation trophies, mm-hmm. um, but it's like the it's like it's the they it's this some adults somewhere in a room are deciding that in order for all kids to feel special, mm-hmm. right, they have to pretend that the kids aren't keeping score. Well, they're keep, I'm just telling you right now they're keeping score. They know mm-hmm. exactly what they're doing and they want to win. Yeah, right? they they don't they they don't walk off the field oh shucks i lost now they don't hold on to losses mm-hmm. the way that i would hold on to losses as a you know 16 17 18 year old yeah they don't hold on to that um I've, i i don't think i'll ever get over a certain loss mm. right like if you if i if you actually started talking to me about it like i would get upset right but yeah. they don't hold on to those yet mm-hmm. They will if they lose a game in the morning. By the afternoon, they're goofing around, right? They're they're yeah. having like they're doing whatever they're doing, right? Yeah. But they don't. It's not that they forgot, and it wasn't like they weren't keeping score, mm-hmm. right? They know. Yeah, I think at that age, like you're saying, sixteen, seventeen, you, it's more than just winning the game too, because by that time you've met friends on your team. Mm-hmm. Your team has basically become your family, you know, and yeah. so it's not only just did I win or did I lose? It's, did I let my team down? Um, I don't know. Would you agree? hundred percent, hundred percent. That's why there's a, the, like we, when I was in college, we lost in the national championship final. So we, we had, we, we still own the record for the most wins, Mm -hmm. um, in a, in school history in a single season. Like we, 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 like at one point in time during the season, we, we, I remember we, we were traveling and we lost the game. And then we had like this, we had this team meeting in the hotel. We were on the road and we had this team meeting in the hotel and I was, I was acting like a jack wagon, but I, but you know, our captains were talking and the seniors were talking, right? And, 
And I was always the one who was the fiercest competitor. So to, to, like, to balance that, when I wasn't on the field, I am the, ja I am di the jack wagon, right? So I just remember like saying things in the hotel room, but everybody would know yeah. that as soon as the game was coming, like as soon as we started, like the switch just goes. Mm -hmm. So we won, I think we won like 10 or 12 games in a row to push, to, and we got all the way through the NCAA tournament. We went to the final four. We were in Charlotte. We beat, we beat Indiana. They had won the tournament two or three years in a row. So like beating them was a huge deal because, mm -hmm. you know, you, you learn how to win, and those guys knew how to win, and we, we smoked them. And then we, then we get to the final, and there was just some like something mentally that was different, mm. right? And then we we gave up a goal first, which we did like a million times, and then we score like nine hundred after mm -hmm. that. And we just couldn't we couldn't make the the breakthrough, right? And they had a couple of guys on their team that were pros for a long time, international mm -hmm. players. They were really good. It was a good team. But the point of the point of it was those guys. I could call any one of those guys, mm -hmm. any one of them, and it would be. Like nothing, like time stood still. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had five people. I had to. I had to come up with five people um, to be in my wedding. Mm -hmm. So I only oh, have wow. two. I only have two brothers. So uh -huh. like, what am I gonna do? <laughs> um, and, That's hard. And the guys that were in my wedding were all guys I played soccer with in college. Every single one of them. Yeah. And one of them, actually, was a kid that I played soccer with when we when we were thirteen. So mm -hmm. I've known him for from the time that I can remember. Mm -hmm. Right. So that is, yes, those are lifelong friendships. Yeah. Um, those are guys that I could call anytime for mm -hmm. anything, mm -hmm. right? Because in sports, you have to rely on the people to your yeah. left and to your right. You're like going to war. And you, yeah, mm -hmm. and it's not quite going to war, but you say mm -hmm. it, right? Yeah, you, you say you it. You say it. But it, if, if your teammate needed something, right, it is your job, it's my job to be the one who's providing that. Mm -hmm. like, and so in, once you learn that, and you come that close. That's why athletes talk about that they love each other. Mm -hmm. That's why you listen to any interview of their giving. Nobody ever uses each other's names mm. because that's not how that's that's not that's not that's not Bob, mm -hmm. right? That's Bobby, right? It's it's Nick, not like yeah, my best friend. His name's mm -hmm. Lane. I don't ever call him Lane. It's yeah. never Lane. It's Leno. Like mm -hmm. it's always that, yeah. right? And um, Michael, like the kid that I've known for. He, Everybody talks, everybody says hello to him. He's mm -hmm. Michael. Yeah. Not to me, he's not. He's Gab, right? And I'll never call him Michael, ever, mm -hmm. right? I may call him Mike, right? But I don't, like, those are not things that you do. And that's a brotherhood, right? That's a, that's a camaraderie. I, I imagine for, you know, yes. for, for the ladies, that, that's your sisterhood. Those mm -hmm. are the people that if you needed something, that's who you trust. Yes. Yep. And I love that. I, th I think I've noticed that too with my son right now. I mean, I keep bringing up my oldest just because he's going through a lot of it right now. I mean, my daughter's in gymnastics, my mm -hmm. middle son, he's in swimming. Oh, so gymnastics. they all um, are very active, but I'm seeing it really play out in my oldest son's life right now because he went in, we, we moved here two years ago. We didn't have any friends um, at first, you know, but then he got back into sports and now he's a freshman, you know, he is on varsity. So he's doing really good in wrestling or was seasons over now. But, um, I see these older kids, I mean, juniors and seniors that are on his team coming up, you're going to do great. You know, um, just really it is a family unit. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it makes me emotional sometimes when I'm on the sideline. Cause I'm like, I know how much that means to him. I know how much that is, you know, creating his character. And I know how much it's going to affect him in his entire life. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's like, that's what sports do. Yep. And from a parent's perspective and a coach's perspective, I think that's something that we both can agree on. Um, and I think that's kind of where, you know, sometimes we have issues. Parents have opinions about coaches. Coaches have opinions about mm -hmm. parents. But ultimately, we both share the same feeling about what sports are, you know, and what they can bring yep. to a kid's life. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if he's, if he's wrestling, right, then he's, his teammates are counting on him, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So that, that senior, that junior who's wrestling 170, mm -hmm. right, or 180, whatever it is, whatever the weight classes are, right, it's probably a freshman or a sophomore that's wrestling 102, yeah. right, or 111, right? So they're counting on him to make weight, right, mm -hmm. to, to be prepared, right, to win his matches, 
right, to, to perform in tournaments so they can earn points, mm -hmm. right? They're counting on him. And then when he's delivering because he's doing his part, right, the, at the best that he can, then 100%, mm -hmm. right? And then the best part, and I think you hit on it, the best part is, is when he's walking through school, right, mm -hmm. his friends, his friends that are freshmen with him, right, are seeing these seniors and juniors saying hello to him in mm -hmm. the hallway, right? Right, mm -hmm. And there's just a, there's a piece of you that is just reminded, like, yep, right? So I, 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 I'm not walking through the hall worried about being book checked. Do they still do that? <laughs> right? Or like smashed into a locker? <laughs> Shoved in a locker, because yeah. Because who's going to push him into a locker when, right, his mm. friends are seniors and they're the, they're the wrestling stars? Right, yeah. Because <laughs> mm. those are the guys you don't want to get <laughs> into, yeah. into fights mm -hmm. with, right? It's the same, like, you know, football is probably a little bit different because, you know, football here... I would imagine, right? The freshmen and sophomores are on that JV team, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? But there, you know, when you you create that camaraderie and then you're part of a larger group, and there's there's recognition that 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 happens and that occurs, mm -hmm. and I 100% agree. And I think he, the interesting thing will be like how his friends, maybe you haven't noticed this, but his friends will shift when, as oh, sports yeah. shift. Oh yes, I right? did. Yes, because he played football mm -hmm. and then wrestled. Yes. Yeah. And so there will be kids Which that I'm come okay in <laughs> to his life while he's playing football, mm -hmm. who then kind of leave his life because he's not playing football because other kids will come into his life while he's wrestling, mm -hmm. right? And then if he does something in the spring, if he, I don't know what he does in the spring, like if he ran cross country or something, whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. Then those kids will come into his life. And then he'll be friends with all of them throughout the year, but he'll, be more, he'll have more intense friendships and more intense reliance on other people yes. that are doing that thing, that, that sport with him at that time. Which honestly helps, too, to keep kids out of trouble. Absolutely. I, I am such an advocate for keeping kids busy with sports and other extracurriculars because there's so much kids can get into They're these gonna days. They're going to fill the time regardless. So true. Right? They're yeah. going to fill the time. Mm -hmm. They might as well fill it with something productive. So what would you, I guess, what can you leave parents with as a coach and as a parent yourself? Like, what is the best thing that parents can do to support the coaches? and um, be a good parent at the yeah. same time. Um, so I, I said it earlier, but I appreciate when parents come and ask mm -hmm. me questions, right? Okay. So, so what, am, what, what, what feedback can you give me about my son or my daughter, right? Mm -hmm. What are you looking for them to do? What, what can I do at home? Um, what are some of the things that you're talking about or the way that you say it that I can reinforce at home? Yeah. Uh, I think one of the things that I notice is, is par some parents have no... They have no problem coming up and, and talking to you. Mm -hmm. And other parents will, they'll lead with, I'm sorry to bother you. And then I'll say, well, number one, you're not bothering. Number two, <laughs> don't apologize. Right? So, you know, how can I help? Yeah. Right? Um, and I think if you, if we are asking for, for my feedback, mm -hmm. um, and then you are reinforcing those things because now we're on the same page, then I think you'll trust me a little bit more, right? I can lean on you a little bit more if mm -hmm. I needed something, if I needed help. I mean, there are certain parents where, I mean, I get, you got to drive to Fort Collins, you get stuck. For those of you that are not in Colorado, we just drive on the freaking highway and you get stuck in <sighs> accidents because it's awful. All the time. Right? I've called parents <laughs> and asked them to run warm-ups. And, you know, and I'll get there, right? And they have set it up exactly the way that I would set that's up. That's awesome. Do, do all those things. So I think that's the biggest thing. Just be involved. And don't, don't, be, don't be ashamed of wanting to be involved. Yeah. Um, but build a relationship with your coach so that you understand where he or she is coming from and what they're trying to accomplish. And then show your kid how to be a teammate. Mm. Right? Because it's the same thing. Because yes. now... There's you, you're the mom, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm the coach, right? Now, you know what I'm trying to accomplish. I know what you're looking for, and I know how you, you want to be, you know, talked to or, or what you're thinking about. Mm -hmm. And now your son will see that you and I, right, are a team trying to help him. Right. Right? I and now that. you set an example. Yeah, that's awesome. That is great advice. Thank you. Well, <laughs> it happens once in a lifetime. <laughs> Yes. Well, I appreciate you being on the show last week and this week. I think that this is really good information for parents to have. I mean, you know, all our kids, a lot of our kids are in sports, and it's good to have your perspective as a parent and a coach. So thank you. Well, I thanks for having it. me. Yeah. And thank you to all of our audience out there. Um, we hope to see you next week or, you know, join us next week. Please remember to subscribe to our channel. Um, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, obviously YouTube if you're watching us. And we hope to see you next week. Bye. Bye.